As an experienced marketing leader, Ute Mikaela Arnett has had the privilege of working for global top brands, including Amazon.com. Her passion lies in tackling challenges and delving into product categories shrouded in taboos and shame. Her journey led her to Africa, specifically Tanzania, where in 2021 she founded a non-governmental organization dedicated to empowering children and young women in undeserved areas through education. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the audience. My name is Ute. I'm sitting currently in the southern part of uh, Tanzania. And I want to talk to you in the next 20 minutes about the silence um, around female health, about around periods particularly, but also how education can help us. So let me first show you a very wise piece of knowledge. If you meet a hungry fisherman, don't give him food. Give him the fishing pole. This is something which I have learned in my years here in Africa, because a lot of people believe, oh yeah, um, if people are hungry, or if people need medicine or whatever, just give them to him. But actually education is so much more powerful because education fosters the tomorrow. Food fosters the today, but education fosters the tomorrow. So let me quickly share with you where I'm coming from. You might all have heard about the circle of poverty. Um, the circle of poverty is yeah, mainly in countries such as Latin America, a lot in Africa, but also you find this in Asia. But interestingly, lately, you even find this in Europe. And remember, I, I originally come from Germany. And even in Germany, I see a lot of these structures lately because poverty has increased. Um, and a study I read yesterday evening actually said that in Germany, unemployed people are the poorest in the whole of Europe. You might not believe this, but that's actually true. So going back to circle of poverty, why am I sharing this with you? This, this circle between family structures, religions, traditions, bound to which lead to little or no school education, because very often children of uneducated families, and when I say, when I say uneducated, I really mean school education, are mostly either not going into in, in schools or attending school schools a little bit or only basic school education because it's a known structure for them it's something they know and they basically a lot of them live from one day to the other um, this results into low paid jobs or not at all paid jobs often into farming and they have no possibilities they are missing possibilities there's no awareness for matters like personal health they don't even know how a body functions because that's often part of a school education. Why am I showing this? Because this relates, this links directly to what I call um, the shame of cycle, which I show you in a minute. Now, when we talk about education, the majority of people think like education is schooling, but actually it's not. Schooling is one dimension but it's not the most important dimension. Of course, uh, learning to read and write is important for all of us. And we wish that everybody could do this. But what is a lot more important are examples like teaching, teaching how a body works, teaching what is actually period, a training, how to, what I call how to do things. So a practical training, you know, how, do, how can you do farming? So let me give you an example um, from Tanzania. The way how they do farming here is they have a big uh, piece of land and they put uh, corn on it. But actually, it would be much more efficient if they put corn next to other uh, um, vegetables because then the family has a much more nutritious food instead of having corn every day. But it's not about doing it for them. It's about training, showing this. Tutoring is what I call the knowledge horizon. So why, for example, why should you not throw your plastic bottles into whatever, into other people's garden or into the nature? Uh, why is it important as a person coming from Congo, for example, and maybe speaking Kiswahili, why is it important to speak a language like English? Or what I call instructing is practical help to enrich lives. So what is important during periods? 
And I'm only showing examples here. And the reason why I do this is um, because education is for a lot of people one dimensional. It's the school education, but there's so much more. So education is a very, very big task. And again, it's not only about the so-called third world countries. We see this also in the developed markets where there's so much more to learn and so much more to do than just sending um, children to school. Now, coming back to periods, um, why is it so important? Education period. So what is the connection? The interesting thing is the period blood, if I may say this, and uh, um, forgive me, I'm German. We are very upfront and very open. Period blood is actually the only blood a human person loses on a natural way. Every other blood you lose as a human person is unnatural because it either comes from an accident or some sort of harm or some sort of disease. And But the interesting fact is this natural blood is surrounded by shame. It's, um, it's drowned in shame, taboos, and myths, what I call. So when, when let me go back to the countries where education is of a bigger issue. In Uganda, for example, the majority of people actually believe the minute a woman has her first period, she has to marry. And I mean, if you think about a girl has with around about 12 years of first period, she has to marry between 12 and 13 years. And this means this is the first time when she has a child. In countries like Nepal or India, for example, there's the, there's the belief in a lot of people, in a lot of families, to keep the purity of the family. The, the woman who is bleeding or has her period, she, ha she cannot sleep in the house. She cannot sleep in the hut. That actually means that women die, girls die. And we, this happened in Nepal, for example. This happens quite often. And the reason why I shared this with you is there's a lot more. I can talk to you ab about hours and hours and hours about period shame and taboos and myths. And it's really interesting what people believe about um, periods. In Italy, for example, and you would say Italy is oh a so-called developed market, so they know about periods. But actually, in the southern part of Italy, people believe if a menstruating woman touches tomatoes, will get foul. And this is in the middle of Europe. So education is really, really important um, in order to foster, foster female health. And for me, female health starts really with the natural body function of also of periods, because every woman has a cycle. Even if she's in her menopause or before her period, a, a woman is so much more than just um, bleeding once a month. So a cycle is so much more than just bleeding once a month. That's why it is so important. We need to start talking to the families to give them the permission to talk about periods. And yes, this is mostly in um, countries like, yes, also here in Africa, but also I see this also in Europe. The, the minute you talk openly about periods, the atmosphere in the room is changing. You know, um, when you go, for example, when you, show, when you go, for example, to the UK, I've once... Um, done an advertising in the UK and um, talked about the intimate area. And I had to stop this advertising because I actually showed period blood. This was an absolutely super no-go to show period blood on a feminine pet. They wanted me to show again the blue liquid. So this is to show you we need to talk about this. We need to give families. It's, it, this is part of the education talk about it openly, in a decent way, of course, in a respectful way. And above all, what is very important is women have to give, we have to give women the permission, girls the permission to touch their intimate area. So for example, when a little girl is going to the toilet, she has to learn it's okay to clean my intimate area after I've been in the toilet and I, I can touch it. Because in a lot of markets, take Mexico, for example, Little girls get told off if they touch their intimate area. We need to include fathers, brothers, grandfathers, boyfriends, the male um, community into this conversation. Because, of course, a lot of the myths or taboos comes from the male community. Um, 
And often this comes also from not understanding. I think the more we talk about it, the more people understand it's very natural. And at, at the end of the day, it helps to foster female health. Also the male community starts to learn and possibly feels a little bit more at ease to talk about this. Schools, school education is important. So not only talk about, okay, um, this is a female body and this is how it works and show pictures or in a book. Um, take the boys into this, T uh, show them period products, show them examples. So you can even show animals because animals also have their periods um, and explain to them this very net, something very natural. So ultimately we have to make room for periods because I firmly believe if we want to foster female health, we have to start breaking the silence about uh, periods because it's connected to pregnancies. It's connected to UTIs. It's connected to so much more than just she's bleeding once a month. We have to change the narr narrative. And I believe education has a huge impact on female health. If there is an understanding of why women have intimate fluids, such as discharge, for example, or why women have, when they are pregnant, why are they losing some drops of pee? This is not because she's dirty or she's unhealthy. It's very normal. Um, and what is actually a good body function? A period is a good body function. We normalize. We, we normalize what is actually normal. And normal is maybe not a good word for it, but I couldn't find another word for it. We put, we take women out of dangerous situations because if a lot of girls have to sleep outside of a house or they have, or they will be sent away from the families during their um, periods or during their birth, like in Somalia, for example, women are in danger. And this is what we need to stop. Talking about hygiene and care, hygiene is so important. Um, a lot of women use rugs for their periods because they cannot buy any um, period products because they have no money. Or most importantly, they wouldn't even know. They don't even have underwear. So how can they use a pad if they don't have underwear to stick this to? So we need to give them solutions, which, and I'm not saying produce more pads, more disposables, because we, we need to soil the earth even more. No, that's not what I'm saying. I, I believe there is another solution, um, which is maybe not industry-led, but... Uh, the simple way is, for example, to wash the old rags and to uh, put them in a different place so that they are away from animals and the, the other clothing and maybe are not used during farming. We would avoid UTIs and other bacterial infections, which often lead to bigger problems women might have. We would prevent childhood pregnancies. Um, again, think about the example I talked to you about Uganda. A lot of sexually transmitted diseases um, are flying around all over the world. And uh, I'm not only talking about AIDS. So we need to include men in this conversation. Um, they have to understand it's, it's a two way. It cannot only be from women, but I think we need to empower women to say no and to give them the opportunity to simply have a condom at hand, not only men. And uh, something really important, what we often forget, what education can do is promote the mental strength. If women understand what they are able to do on what they are allowed to do on what, what they can do, they can also stand up against family violence, which is very normal in a lot of countries. So let me give you quickly an example from Tanzania because I, I work here, so I know Tanzania quite well. Mothers and grandmothers do not talk about periods. Periods do not exist. Intimate areas do not exist. This is, it is as if a woman stops at the belly button and starts again at the knees. Even though 60% um, of the Tanzanian population is below 17. So obviously there are children, a lot of children. So what um, in my school, um, I have a school and an education center. So what we do is we get mothers and grandmothers and any other female staff to talk about periods, to give them a room where they can start talking about this. So anything about pain, about what they have experienced, just talk about this. 
make them almost ambassadors so that they understand, oh, it's actually normal. I can talk about this. It's, it's not, God will not punish me because they think they are dirty. And what we do with our children in school, we show them how a period works with our dogs or cats. We need to talk about hygiene matters, what they can do, show it. So practical help and include, build a community almost and have, of course, protection in school. So the important point I want to make is education helps us to foster female health. It fosters growth. And growth for me has a lot to do with what I feel, think is knowledge that we give, we equip women with knowledge, understanding, and let them progress. So we break boundaries for them and we challenge norms. Not only in Africa, we should do this throughout the world. All the girls here in the room, I don't know how many, but also guys, I think we all should be for it because we all experience this.